a big shot into the middle. This is a look at it. You'll see a man come forward right here right. and get to the enemy right here. And that's what it's going to take to eliminate that big play. And watch him come forward right into the hole. And that's what eliminates the kind of plays that Colorado is going to need to win it, the 30 and 40 yard game. settle down, Dick, both teams. I think we're going to see a good, solid, well-played game from this point on. No question, they were rattled coming out here, even the Notre Dame team, but playing for these kind of stakes, in this kind of a crowd and environment, both clubs struggled for about the first eight minutes, but now, I think we'll see a game. A real, well-executed game. Both Holtz and McCartney told you that they were looking for the fourth quarter in this contest. They want to make it a battle of attrition to wear each other down. The big play guys will decide who wins it. Hagan, out of the backfield, completes to George Hemingway, and it is a first down Colorado at the 15. Chris Zorich really is active in there tonight. They say he's 80%. He couldn't be 80%. He's moving too quickly. Now watch him come around in a stunt as the nose man, and there he is. Now, people say this guy really isn't going to be a pro. He's too short. I believe he'll be a fine pro. Good move. He's got good movement. He's a relentless, relentless. He's simply a great football player. Billy Clark made the tackle near Zorich. He wears number 50, as does his idol with the Chicago Bears, Mike Singletary. Colorado buys some real estate to the 15. The enemy trying to cut back, and he's dumped after a yard. And he's all by carrier. Zorich again. You well know the story of Zorich. He's a grown up by in a tough neighborhood south side of Chicago. Raised by his mother, never met his father. His mother, Yugoslavian. She's watching tonight with relatives. He said it's a big household in Chicago cheering for him. An All-America two times and a captain now. And a charming, delightful guy, fiery, and a leader on this team. I think he'll be a leader in the National Football League. There'll be a place for this guy. Some say he's not a first-round pick. I believe he'd be a great pick around the 25th to the 28th man in the draft. one of the uh, typical plays by Zorich. He's slanting. Notre Dame decided to slant their line for this game. And they're, they're slanting a full man. In other words, Zorich over the center will quickly move over the guard position when the ball okay, snapped. The, the entire line's doing that the because 16. they feel, the Irish feel that Colorado's just too big and strong to take on directly. So they're going to move that defensive line. Lined up right over center Jay Lewenberg now. Test. 
fact, as Bill McCartney told us, that he's played a real tough piece of Big 8 tackle all season long and honored by his conference as an all-Big 8 performer, number 95. Last year, he tackled, made 22 tackles for losses during the year, which has to demonstrate something. He certainly doesn't look like your typical NFL defensive lineman, but this guy's quick, he's relentless, and I think he has the ability to break through blockers. to have the ball 18 to 20 times a game. I'm sure that's not one of the, the kind of plays he wanted. You know, watching that play in practice, I remarked to Lou Holtz, what a well-designed, well-conceived play because it broke wide open in practice sessions. This time, Brown read that, and he just attacked the play even before it got started. That's what they have to do with Rocket. You've got to get him just as the ball gets there, or, or you just really don't have a chance. Third down, long nine. This time it's Brooks, and he drops the ball. Greg Beekert was coming up to make the hit for Colorado, and the Irish with excellent field position at the 33. It stalls, and on comes Jim Sexton, number 16. Again, the, the, we watched this play practice beautifully, and everything's fine, and oh, is it tough to be a coach or a player in these kind of situations? Just a little edge difference. Sexton is in not as a pooch punter this time, but to hold for Craig Hendrick, who will try a 50-yard attempt. This would be his career longest. It's got distance. It hits the upright. No good. The kick hit the right upright of the goal post and bounced away. No good. So by the width of that center it could have been a 55 yarder actually so we know that he's got the leg and the, and the resources if they need the long field goal in this game though Colorado's sidelines pleased at that result with 132 remaining in a scoreless first close scoreless late in the first period uh, Colorado working with a new offensive coordinator with that story here's Bob Trumpy yeah, Dick, it is rather interesting. Coach Donardo is going to become the head coach at Vanderbilt. He's been out recruiting for Vanderbilt. McCartney had him back because he's a great influence on the team. So this is Coach Barnett's first game as the offensive coordinator of the Colorado Buffaloes. How about that for pressure? Oh, my. And Barnett uh, started leading that first sequence uh, with a reverse to Pritchard. And, uh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, both head coaches are directly involved in the offense. Both know exactly what they're doing. A big part of the planning. Colorado on the missed field goal, taking over at the 32. And again, it's to the big fullback, George Hemingway, the 230-pound senior from Colton, California, one of 12 Colorado players from the state of California. Some uh, call it the University of California at Boulder. They've always recruited well in Southern California. Hemingway last year in trouble, was sent home after a drinking incident on one of the many tours. He had to come back, apologize to his team, win back their confidence. And as Coach McCartney said, not a man that uh, takes humility that easily, but he's done just that. And we'll show you later a big field goal play that figured in his absence. There goes the enemy into the open. All the way to the Notre Dame 43. Like a shot. about the fullback, George Hemingway. Now, Lewenberg will do a fine job here, but watch Hemingway come through on the linebacker, just talking about him. He'll lead the play, and this is what Notre Dame wanted, didn't want. He comes right through and knocks that linebacker, Stonebreaker, right off the line of screen. First down, Colorado at the Irish 43. Final half minute, first quarter, no score. Hagan. He's made up his mind he's going to run for the ball. There isn't any option. When he comes around.
around that corner. There's sort of a fake option. He's going to take the ball and run with it. That quickness and speed of Hagen and Bienemy, among others, and Pritchard, is what Colorado's going to have to win with. It's the big game. It's not the war of attrition. They're going to have to win with a big game. Hagen, a sensational baseball player, switch hitting shortstop, drafted by Toronto. He wants to play for Colorado. Driver says he can do whatever he wants. That's the end of the first period. No score in Miami. Colorado wants to get off the line of scrimmage because Hemingway had practiced this over and over, and all the replacement had done was watch. He didn't get off the line of scrimmage, and those are the kinds of things that killed Colorado last year. I asked Hemingway, who was suspended, where was he when he watched the Orange Bowl? He said, with my brother in South Carolina, I put my fist through his wall. I said, you're kidding. I put my fist through the wall. I was so angry at myself. We start the second quarter, no score, and there's the enemy at 5-7. He just ducks in behind that huge line of Colorado and then breaks out the other side and makes three or four here. Zorich and Jones, the tacklers, 30 yards Eric now for Jones the enemy tackle, on five there. carries. Number 42. Both teams are haunted by the big play. They both have big play people and a drive the length of the field with short five and to six yards gains. I don't think will be the difference. It's going to be the enemy, Richard, someone, Ismael, breaking big and getting that score and breaking the game over. Two 
what occurred a year ago. They didn't think they could get it in. They had a fake field goal. Now they have to kick the real field goal. Jim Harper from 22 yards. Harper, a junior, played at L.A. Valley College Junior College last year, and he drives it through. Colorado takes the lead, 3-0. McCartney's teams have been tough when they've scored first the last three seasons, losing only twice of 28 games, and they have the lead 3-0. And now as they position for a kickoff, he is going to use a new man, Pat Blateau, to kick off instead of Jim Harper. And uh, what are they going to do, Bill? Well, typically the kickoff will run about that kind of a, a trajectory. Pat's going to kick the ball, and it'll come down very, very short. They want everyone under that ball before Ismail can get started. So look for a high kickoff coming down around the 20 to the 22-yard line. Ismail on the 5. They're willing to concede a first down, in other words, to the 30-yard line just to keep it out of Ismail's hands. Lato hits it this side to Rodney Culver at the 15. Culver big, but he has speed. 35 and down to the 38-yard line. Well, back to the drawing board. Ismael threw a good block to lead him there to the 38. Sometimes you can overcompensate that in a sense is what Colorado has done. They don't want Ismael to get the ball with any running room, so you start kicking short, and when you do that, the coverage can overrun the ball, which just happens. Notre Dame has a new face in the backfield as everyone is riveted on the rocket. Jerome Bettis, number six, a freshman from Detroit, 235 pounds, now at fullback. Waters and then the quick toss to Ismael. And the Rocket. Oh, is he tough for 175 pounds? Finally wrestled down at the 46 yard line by all Big 8 safety Tim James. They're just taking Great advantage of that zone defense, hitting Ismael very quickly and then having a blocker out in front of him to get the extra four or five yards. Number 14, Ray Riggs, comes into the huddle for Notre Dame and Tony Smith leads. I'm here. I'm right here. 
wasn't carrying the ball enough, but the offensive line coach, Joe Moore, was up upset with the center, Mike Help, and the tight end, uh, Derek Brown, because they weren't picking up certain blitzes. They've worked on it, and evidently they picked them up because they've uh, taken advantage of the last couple of blitz. Also, he told his offensive linemen, look, if you're tired, I want you to take a blow. We'll wear these guys down like last year. Those were his words. Myra keeps the ball this time and gets only two into the arms of Canavis McGee and company. That was the first option play we've seen as such. Meyer will tend to pitch the ball. That time he's kept it probably by instruction to set up the pitch later. And he's going to come down the line with a swinging back to his outside. He sees a little hole, but there's the difference between Meyer and Rice of a year ago, the quarterback, who ran so very, very effectively. And let's credit Chan Brown was the man who made the hit. Canavis McGee cleaned it up. turnabout 
fair play. Hendrick Charles gets the Johnson high the kickoff. kickoff shot. OJ? Hey, it's interesting, Dick. At the end of the first quarter, I was listening to the offensive line coach, and Ricky Waters walked up to me, rolled his eyes. He was very upset that he wasn't getting the he ball. He was totally getting open, and after he scored the touchdown, he came off the field with a big smile and gave me the thumbs up. One happy camper. Ricky Waters, the senior who was recruited as a wide receiver, is going to be Tim Brown's replacement. And then uh, Lou Holtz was a man who likes to move players around, offense to defense, so wide receiver for running back. Have an unbalanced line, Dick, to the wide field. You see the two men on the left of the center. Wait a minute, Sagan. On the keeper. Zorich with another tackle for Notre Dame. Notre Dame slanting that line to wide field. Colorado's trying to run right with the Notre Dame team. On the tackle for Notre Dame. He's a man who dislocated his kneecap in the middle of the year and just refused to sit down, played through the injury. He had suffered it once before. Had Zorich, who was 6'1 and 266. Might well be an inside linebacker in the NFL, Bill. I think he can play the nose position, much like a Michael Carter. He'll weigh 275 as a pro, and he's very, very quick. He reminds me a lot of Kevin Fagan of the uh, 49ers who played for Miami. Fagan to his tight end, Sean Brown, and the junior from Granada Hills, California, gets shy of a first down by Jim Flanagan, number 44. His daddy, Jim, played at the University of Pittsburgh and with the Green Bay Packers for four years. One of the problems is a guy like Mike Pritchard sitting out there not getting a chance to handle the ball. Part of it's because Hagan is not a great passer by any means, but Pritchard is a wonderful athlete whose statistics are very, very comparable to Ishmael. But he's just not getting a chance. Every time he touched the ball this year, he gained 20 and a half yards. Pritchard, third down, the enemy. And it's going to be close for a first down. They were looking for number one, the Irish defense, Bryant Young, a freshman, playing a tackle, 97, submarining on the play. Another of the young freshmen that Lou Holtz is very high on. Holtz told me that he feels this freshman class, it's a first down Colorado, this freshman class is the best he has ever had in his 21 years of head coaching. And he feels they have not only the talent, but he said the quality, the personal qualities to win a national championship, if not more than one. Lou Holtz at 147 pounds strong. He wakes up after four or five hours sleep. So does McCarty. Up the middle goes Hemingway. And they were looking for the enemy. And the option to the fullback works. And Willie Clark in the secondary makes a stop after a gain of nine more. I've talked about the unbalanced line. This time, with only two people right here, you'll see the Notre Dame team slant away from it. And there's a big hole up inside. So the Colorado coaches upstairs are probably seeing the same thing you and I are, Dick. Notre Dame slanting to the wide field against the unbalanced line. Colorado then recovered and came back the other way. Zorich is out now on second and one. Hagan play action. And drills it complete to Pritchard. First down at the Notre Dame 47. Number nine, Mike. Rod Smith made the tackle. Good for Colorado first down. Well, they call him the Rocket of the Rockies. Mike Pritchard, all big eight split in. And here's a comparison in rushing. Yardage close, and Pritchard 15.3 average and two more touchdowns in the rocket. Receiving, again, close with Pritchard averaging more and more touchdowns. And it's in the kick returns where Ismael makes up the difference. Pritchard, not with the publicity, but certainly a deserving of All-American notice. The enemy short yardage on first down. Bob Dahl, the tackle. Tackled by Bob Dahl, number 93. And there's the return comparison. Uh, Ismael with 10 more. And, of course, uh, what isn't in that statistic is all the yards six. Notre Dame makes with kickers trying to keep it away from well, them. Well, Pritchard just isn't realized as much you can see on returns or anything else. The enemy is, uh, looks like a twisted ankle. He twisted it in practice as we watched them on Friday. Second down and six. Hagan. He throws it downtown for Pritchard. A bit too long. For Mike Pritchard in the end zone. Well, as much as they've worked on the passing game.
game, and as much as they've improved on it, it's just not a college-level passing attack. That time, Pritchard, Pritchard's going to get open, Dick, virtually every time he goes down the field. And Greg Davis, like fell, Greg Davis fell on the play on the coverage, so that could have been disastrous for the Irish. Let's go to Eric Bieniemy and see how he was injured. It was the lead play that they ran against with the unbalanced line, a beautifully blocked play, but it looks like Bieniemy Bieni is just, uh, I assume, just rolled on and an ankle twisted. He's tough. He'll be back. Third down. Hagen looking for Pritchard and not close. Willie Clark blitzed right up the middle, a safety blitz, and Hagen saw it coming, couldn't do a thing about it. Fourth down, upcoming. You'll see the blitz coming right up the field inside, and Hagen doing, really being able to do nothing about it. Well timed, right up the middle, no one could block it. Willie Clark timed it. Now, we didn't see that in their practice session, so they've had some things they did in South Bend. Not down here. So with four minutes and a tick left on the clock here at the Orange Bowl before halftime, Tom Ruin punts for the third time. The Rocket at the 10 of Notre Dame. Readjusting their blocking assignments. And Ruin drills one. That's going to headed to the end zone. Yes, indeed. So the Irish Ruin's will take over at their 20. 3.52 remaining in the half. It'll be first and 10. The sideline during the last offensive set by Colorado had his right shoulder strap very, very tightly by the trainer. He looked like he was in serious pain with his right shoulder. But as you can see, the three-time All-Big 8 linebacker, McGee, is in the game as the Irish start from their own 20-yard line. Well played. Intense first half. Not a penalty flag has been thrown. Him out of bounds. The receiver is well, this Adrian game, Carroll, in light of what has happened on this New Year's Day and the other bowl games, is <laughs> quite a delight at six to three. In the other six games, including Washington's win over Iowa, Gaines the Rose Bowl 46-34, the average margin of victory was 28 points. A day of total blowouts, sadly, for many losers. So much emphasis on being number one. Some of the teams, I believe, some of the schools came into these games without a lot of incentive, without a lot, a lot of uh, determination. He got blown out. Ismael in the backfield, and they were waiting for him. Shad Brown from Pasadena, California. Used to sell Rose Parade programs for three years. Grew up in the shadow of the famed Rocky Rose Bowl. And uh, he'll like what he sees when he reviews this film. Well, Chad is going to come into that line of scrimmage play. so hard that he takes on the blocker and, and slides into the play. Down. So he not only met a blocking guard, he just slid and adjusted to the back. Very, very well done. Collector of reptiles. He bought two pythons while he's been here in Florida. On second down, Meyer has the screen set up for the Rocket. 40. And gathered by safety Greg Thomas. And a flag goes down at the 44. the Buffaloes. This is when the Irish are so difficult. Closing minutes of the half. With the Irish having just more dimension to their offense than Colorado. Very well executed screenplay. Beautifully blocked down the field. And and the late hit coming in. And that's Beaker. He's the guy that makes all the tackles, but uh, that was an attack. Esmael has touched the ball eight times today, five receptions. That's one shy of his career high. Two rushes and one kick return. He's averaging 12 touches a game, and many feel that's not enough for all of his talent. In fact, he Lou Holtz said he hopes 18 to 20 today. This is Tony Brooks, the senior, to the 35-yard line. The ball carrier, the Tony Brooks. This is big game experience showing up on Notre Dame's part. Beating a team like Southern Cal five straight times, being a Michigan, a Michigan State in big, big games, this is a situation they can thrive in. They've been there before, as we've ever said. Well, how about uh, Miami? There's another victory this right. year. The traditional rivals, too. People that plan to play them all off-season. They still do successful. Triple left, Rodney Culver takes the handoff, and he's near another first down Rodney at the 31. Gary Howe, 95, gets off the ball carry. It's easy to say, but Colorado.
Colorado just can't go in at halftime with any more points. They haven't registered much offense themselves, and any points added up at this point, Colorado is going to have a hard time that second half. A minute and 51 seconds left, and time has been called for the measurement. You saw Rodney Culver come off the field with 710 yards rushing on the season. Uh, that's significant, and it's the first time a Notre Dame fullback has led the team in rushing in 13 years. You have to go back to 77 and Jerome Evans to find a fullback that was number one in that rushing column. It is a first down for Notre Dame at the 31 of Colorado. And Culver comes back in. Lou Holtz calls all the plays. He directs the offense throughout the game. He gets a lot of help naturally from assistant coaches upstairs and downstairs. He calls the plays. He puts together the offense. This is not just a motivator. This is a true technician as well as a great organizer and motivator. in a crowd and everyone just trying to corral him bunch him toward the middle gather him up don't let him get in the outside they all know where to go once he has the ball they start heading for their own goal line almost look at the moves now he's beating some excellent athletes these aren't just guys that are passing through town time out 6-3 Notre Dame and driving for more Recall came on a 35-yard reverse. He didn't cast a, catch a pass, rushed for 16 times. Today, three rushes, a minus one, but the five receptions, one shy of a career high. He just can't corral it. It's he, not so much the 7.1 or the 5.5. It's getting that big game, a 35 or 50-yarder, that makes a difference in a ball game. Big blitz. Second down and incomplete to Rodney Culver as Rick Potter had to hurry his throw. Davis McGee was putting on the pressure. They put everybody into the line of scrimmage on a blitz hauled just at the right time. You'll see these people all coming into the line of scrimmage and a screen pass called and really no one there to block. See, unblocked people. Chad Brown is right on top of Meyer. So it was well called just at the right time, but they better not try it again if the Rockets out into the flanker. Now he's in the slot and you don't see a blitz coming this time. They'll get away with it once or twice a ball game. Defensive play by Chad Brown again, and Brown has had a brilliant first half, putting the pressure on Rick Meyer and forcing the short throw. Notre Dame tried to put the rocket going away from the sprinter. Meyer went left, rocket went up the field, and now he'll break inside and then back across the field. And the ball would have been there possibly, but the pass rush by Brown broke it up. Here's a 48-yard field goal attempt by Hendrick. He again shows the strong leg, but he misses to the left. So Hendrick has hit the upright from 50, and he hooked wide left from 48. And Lou Holtz said, hey, you're going to... This is Holtz working his best psychology, not letting the young kicker get his head down. He's saying, you're going to get another chance. Hang in there. 107 remaining in the first half. It remains Notre Dame 6, Colorado 3. The master motivator, Lou Holtz, making sure that Hendrick stays in the game. I don't remember you uh, embracing Ray Worsing all that much with well, the 49ers. Ray, in 1981, really got us into the Super Bowl with some great kicking. But I also had a cord hooked to me, and they all knew how much range I had on that cord. I could only go about 30 feet, so everybody was isolated way out around me. But, you know, Lou Holtz is a constant coach. Some people say he couldn't go to the NFL level. I think he's a great football coach, and I think he'd adapt to it beautifully. At the 30-yard line, it's Hagan. He can scramble. Now he's going to run and throws incomplete to the tight end, Sean Brown. But Lou Holtz did get a chance. The flag is down to coach in the NFL in 1976 the against the Jets, and he didn't finish the year, went three and 10. He took on an aging Jet team. He took on an aging Jet team, and he uh, 
taking on with that aging jet team he was a very young inexperienced coach it was way too much for him. right now as i visit with this guy he's one of the truly great men in the field right now i believe he could take any kind of an nfl team any kind of a college program and make it a winner and the, the guy's the ethics and his professionalism are among the very very best the penalty against hagan for crossing the line of scrimmage before the pass he did have some running room but elected to throw 101 left in the half colorado has its three timeouts remaining they throw underneath incomplete to pritchard trying to set up a little wide screen now, that time dick pritchard's broken hand cost him the reception you can see him trying to handle that ball with that broken left hand because it was a tough catch running right at a quick short pass he couldn't handle it Piloting the MetLife blimp for tonight's action, Captains Mike Fitzpatrick and Corky Bellinger. There's the MetLife overview of the Orange Bowl. So much wonderful football history here. In fact, four national champions decided here in this game in the decade of the 80s. Third and long for Hagen. George Williams can't tackle him. Hagen brought down at the 30. So back to the original line of scrimmage, Bob Dahl and Grimm make the tackle and timeout called now by the Irish who will Bob have a chance and Hagen slow getting up also there is Don Grimm and the quarterback of the Buffaloes much Again, like the, the top running back Eric Bieniemy, will limp off timeout the Irish will get the ball on a punt with 50 seconds to go and Notre Dame leads by three big eight quarterback Darian Hagen limping off, favoring a knee and uh, wincing in pain. That looks pretty serious. Here's what happened as uh, Dahl and Grimm converge on him. Watch that left knee. It gets pinned underneath. And he knows right away. It didn't look like a blow to it. It looked like he wrenched it into the ground. So Hagen out of commission probably uh, won't have an opportunity. Colorado's offense the remainder of the half anyway. 50 seconds. Remaining before the intermission, and Tom Ruin will kick three men back for the Irish. They have a return on, of course, the rocket, the deep man inside the 30. Ruin, oh, does he hit this one? Oh, my. To the 10 yard line. Did he outkick the coverage? No. Great kick by Ruin. 59 yards. Tackled by Paul Rose, number 46, on the health of Darian Hagan. Here's Bob Trumpy. Yeah, Dick, this sounds like bad news. He just told the Colorado trainer and doctor that he felt pop out. They were not sure exactly what pop out meant, but he was feeling, the doctor was feeling above the kneecap. He is limping and limping badly going to the locker room. Unable to play in the second half. The job will fall in the hands of Charles Johnson, a junior from Detroit. As we told you before, the man who quarterbacked the team in that Missouri win. Give us to Ricky Water. No, that's Tony Brooks. The ball carrier has a 30 Brooks. yard line. Well, Charles Johnson, the, the backup quarterback, has played well. He moved the ball extremely well against Washington. You remember when Hagen had that separated shoulder. And then, he, then he had that final drive against Missouri. He did a fine job. So he's not a, a, not a bust. He can play football. First and 10 to 29, that play game. Clock running now at 25 seconds. The Irish did not use a timeout. Time stop for the first down. Here's Waters spinning his way into midfield. And finally brought down at the 38-yard line by Dwayne Davis. The nickel back for Colorado. Timeout with 15 seconds remaining. First half, Notre Dame leading 6-3 and into the eyes of, and the mind perhaps, of Charles Johnson. 165 pounds, Dick, but he is a competitor. He played well against Iowa State. He moved the ball on the final drive against Missouri with a five-down situation. And against Washington, though, he has played, and he's, a, and he's a, I think, a, even a better passer than Hagan. That's not saying an awful lot. But he is a better pass. So Darian Hagan in the sight you don't like to see, the star quarterback of Colorado, being assisted back into the locker room. You'd almost assume it's a cartilage problem that most likely was displaced in some way that it makes the, the knee locks and he's helpless. Is it the kind of injury from what uh, Bob Trumpy told us that you would even expect him to reappear in the second half? No, I don't think he can come back. I don't think it's a terribly serious injury, but I doubt that he... No, he won't come back. So Bill McCartney will have to 
engineer a new game plan for the second half recognizing the perhaps limitations of Johnson as a runner but uh, perhaps exploiting his strength as a passer 15 seconds before intervention rocket in motion now they look for the rocket but instead throw to Derek Brown the tight end and the first down did not get out of bounds at the 43 so the Irish have to use their final timeout
say people like Alfred Williams, that entire defensive unit, are going to have to maintain their disciplines. If they get frantic, if they get frantic at all and try to make plays themselves to compensate for the loss of Hagen, these kind of things happen. Play gained five yards. It's first the down. Federal Express Orange Bowl with the national championship at stake for the University of Colorado. We've just begun the second half. Notre Dame leading. Colorado ranked one, six to three. Contact made, and the five yards will go against Joel Steed, number 93, the nose tackle for Colorado. That ball, offside, defense, still first down. So it'll be first and five for the Irish. Bill McCartney just celebrated his 50th birthday at the start of the season and proudly weighed in at 195, he told us, the same as his graduation weight from high school. And he has that 15-year contract. Fred Dick Connor, the Denver Post, didn't know if that was a punishment or praise. <laughs> Tony Brooks. Elder makes the tackle. Looks as if the Irish have another first down. Sort of an Marcellus ominous look Elder right now. The They're stretching out That's that Colorado defense and then just driving up in between We're linebackers. Just taking first advantage of speed will move and the ball will break right in behind him. And they're just trying to stretch that defense. Three wide receivers to one side that softens up the defense. But basically, with those people stretched, they're just breaking between people. That time, Steed moved and they broke behind him. There goes Ricky Waters into the clear. And Waters is to the five. Look good on that play. He exploded. Untouched going through the line of scrimmage. Brown gets cut off beautifully by the back. Brian beautiful job. Yeah, beautiful job. And they just splitting those defenders. That's an, uh, like four plays in this drive. Colorado people went one way and the back broke the other way. Well, this is remindful of uh, Anthony Johnson and what the Irish did in the second half against Colorado in the Orange Bowl last year. Working with two tight ends. First and goal. To help out on the tackle. The on the Great stop. Beekert. Chad Brown. Also there. Paul Rose. See Colorado moving people around. And that's a beautiful job of coming un under up underneath everything. Paul Rose did a fine Real job of meeting that entire play. First he met the tight end, then the back. That's an important call though. Paul Rose, 46, is the backup to Canavis McGee. So McGee's shoulder must be bothering him. Full house backfield for the Irish, and Meyer changes his call. The Rocket is the right halfback. They go to Culver. Culver, no game. Beekert again, leading tackler on the team. Beekert just traveled right with Culver, met him right at the line of scrimmage. So you'll see Beekert coming from the right-handed side of the screen and just meeting the ball carrier right at the line of scrimmage. Beautiful shot. In the great tradition of Colorado skiing, Beekert said, I'm going to go home after the game and hit the slopes. He says, I'm the kind of guy who points him straight downhill and yells, watch out. Now look out for a play pass here. We saw them in practice working on it. They'll fake inside and throw in the flat. There it is. Meyer to the end zone. Off the fingertips of the Rocket incomplete. Dave McLuhan on the coverage, and the Irish bring on the field goal unit. That was a big defensive stay.